Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. I was just listening. I thought I heard my husband speaking to me. I must be hearing things. Shalom, family. Uh, I'm coming to you with a, uh, <laughs> dare I say, a quick video. It'll be quick if I don't let you guys talk my head off. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's generally what, what happens, right? <laughs> I wound up uh, I wind up talking your heads off probably more than anything else. It's not the other way around. So anyhow, shalom, shalom. Uh, come on in, family. I'm going to wait for you to join me. I'll try not to keep you too long so that you can go ahead and do your dinners and take care of whatever business you need to take care of. I've got some things that I'm still working on as well. So is anybody going to join me? Of course, old McMoney is going to join me if no one else does. My sis is going to be here. Shalom, shalom, old McMoney. <laughs> You're like one of the first ones to join. And there's my brother, Jermaine Bonners. Shalom, shalom, beloved. It's good to see us. So what is going on? Shalom, shalom, plain and simple. It's good to see you, Ruby Timbers. It's good to see you guys. Come on in. Come on in, then. Let me get rid of this hair. Tie it up so it's not in the way. This is what I do when, when it's bothering me. I just throw it back. You just happen to already be on YouTube. Well, I'm glad that you were. I'm glad you were able to catch this one. Shalom, shalom, uh, Ruby uh, Timbers and Jamie Skirvin. It's good to see you, Denise Parker. It's good to see you guys. Come on in. I'm going to try, like I said, I'm going to try not to keep you too long. Um, if you guys start yapping and yapping and yapping then, and, and keep me here, then I'll be here longer. <laughs> I'm going to throw it off on you. I'm going to blame you all. Um well, you guys know what's in the headlines today. I'll go ahead and get started. We, it looks like there's at least 26 people um, that have tuned in. It's a small number, but it's family. Okay. It's a small number, but it's family. So you guys have been uh, checking out the headlines of what's been going on. You heard about that bridge, right? And it's a shame. It's a shame. And uh, my condolences go out to uh, those who are involved. Um, I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't even imagine being on that bridge uh, at the time that uh, it got hit and uh, started going down. I, I couldn't even imagine uh, what those people must have gone through, you know. Um, and I know that there's still... Less, less I heard, there's still some folks that are missing. So be in prayer for that uh, that group um, as I am in prayer for them as well, okay? So that's a sad, sad thing. That's a sad, sad thing. So you guys have already heard about what was going on with that. You know, I listen to and I like to collect little tidbits of different things. And I like to collect these tidbits because I like to see how they're connected, if you know what I mean. And you know how I connect everything back to the Bible, right? I connect everything back to these end days that we're in, how what's going on relates to the prophecies of the end times. Um, you know, it's kind of like a, a, a checkpoint for me. Are we dealing with this right now? Is, you know, the Bible says that these are going to happen in the end days. Are we dealing with this right now? And I check those things off that we are. And uh, so I kind of, I kind of, that's the lens that I see things through. I don't, how, how are you guys? Do you guys see through, see through a lens like that? Do you compare the things, the world events to the Bible prophecies and, and such? Or is that just something that I, I, I do? <laughs> Is that something that you guys do also? Shalom, shalom, baby cakes and, and everyone else that has joined us, Sharper One, uh, Beauty in the Light, shalom, shalom. It's good to see you. 
Uh, Sharper One says, let me see, you say, I am in Maryland and we use that route to go to New York. Well, uh, I don't even know where to begin. Okay. I don't even know where to begin. There's a few things. Mm hmm. Oh, my body. Get out of my head. <laughs> Get out of my head, sis. <laughs> Because you, you went there. Because you know what? I went there too. Uh, old McMoney says that uh, Francis Scott Key, the author of the racist poem that is the national anthem. Now, just by me reading that and you posting that would anger quite a few people uh, that honor that anthem uh, and hold it dear. There are a lot of people that honor that anthem and they hold it dear. So, so Francis Scott Key, he is the author of that, um, the anthem. And depending on who you talk to, people feel different ways about that anthem, okay? Um, there is a verse in that anthem that, um, uh, speaks to the unaliving of slaves, okay? It, that's a fact, it's in there. Um, you cannot deny, it can't take it away, it's in there. Um, people don't want you to highlight that uh, because in his latter years of, of being on this earth, he had a A change of heart, let's say. Okay. He had a change of heart. Now, this man was a slave owner. Let's let's let it be said. He was a slave owner. But in his latter years, he had a change of heart and um reversed what he was what he had been doing and began to work to uh eradicate slavery. At least that's the that's the story. It's interesting that um he and Thomas Jefferson waited until their latter years when they were getting ready to leave uh, this place to make those changes. It's almost like they uh, were considering if there is a God, what will we face when we meet him? Okay. So, um, It's interesting. It's really interesting. And, and you know, what's interesting to me is uh, what a couple of years ago or so, you know, they were they were tearing down um, statues of a lot of the um, do I call them founding founding fathers of the Americas. I don't consider them my founding fathers. Uh, but the founding fathers of the Americas, uh, many were slave owners, and they were they were tearing down those statues and getting rid of them. And uh, there are folks that don't understand why we want to do something like that. Why why there would be a need for something like that. However, if I were to explain explain to those same people, um, not explain. If I were to to discuss with those same people um, how they would feel if we were to, or or Germany were to um, erect statues that venerated um, uh, Adolf Hitler, how would they feel? How would they feel? I, I don't know of any place in this world that holds him in such high esteem, knowing what he's done, that they have uh, erected um, statues in his name, Adolf Hitler. Okay, I don't know of any of them. If you guys know where there are some standing, let me know. But I don't know that there are any in the, in the world uh, that have been erected for in honor of him. What I don't understand is how human nature, who says that they love the God that I serve, 
can at the same time understand what I just said about Adolf Hitler, but cannot understand how somebody who looks like me, who has ancestors who were slaves, could feel the same way about George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Francis Scott Key. That we live in a world where it's okay to have a bridge in his name, to have statues to honor him. Make it make sense. It's, you know what it tells us? It tells us as, as Negroes, as Black people, as the children of Israel, that we don't count. This is another way of, of them telling us that we don't count. We don't matter. We have no other choice but to be in this system. We're here, okay? We're, we're not of this world. We're in it, but we're, we're not of this world. We're here. We have no other choice, okay? And as such, I can go to my, my pocketbook, oh, as the old folks would say. I can go to my purse, and I can pull out uh, currency. Currency that have the faces of slave owners on, on them. And the world says it's okay. I've never said it was okay. I have no other choice but to use this currency because I live in this world. But I don't honor those men, lift those men up for what they did. They hurt people that look like me. They owned people who look like me. But we don't matter and we don't count because they would never have currency with Hitler's face on it because they don't view what happened in, during slavery as, as awful as what happened uh, during the Holocaust. It's as simple as that. So um, when I heard about this bridge, uh, and the damage that uh, occurred. That was one thing that, that I thought about. How in this day and age, we would still be honoring people like that. <laughs> okay. And at the same time, I also thought about we're at the end, right? We're at the end. And our Heavenly Father is looking at everything, everything that the children of Israel has had to endure. He is looking at everything. And I, the, along with the bridge thing, excuse me, I've also been churning in my head. Uh, the other thing that, that is uh, taking up traction in the headlines today, and that is the um, uh, Vladimir Putin. Now, I'll get to uh, the terror attack that they had over there in a, in a few minutes. But uh, one of the other things that's in the headlines with um, a lot of folks on the Internet right now buzzing about uh, Vladimir Putin uh, showcasing a black Jesus. OK. Now, I told you yesterday, whether it's it's real or not. If it's uh, AI or not, I can't tell you one way or the other. There are those that are saying that it's not real, that it is AI. But you know what? If Even if it is, it is gaining traction. It is going around the world, this narrative. Okay? It is going around. The, it's going viral. So whether it is, it is true or not, I can guarantee you that that man is going to see his face along with the headlines that what he's, you know, folks are saying he's doing, and that is proclaiming a black Christ. Okay. So is it done for, for nothing? I don't think so. Whether it's real or not, I, I don't think that it's going to really matter in the long run. And the other part about that is this. I think it's a precursor. I think it's a precursor of what's to come. Okay a precursor of what's to come. Uh, along with those uh, videos that are going viral with folks talking about him uh, announcing uh, to the world a, a black Christ, there are those who are stepping up and actually talking 
what, what would we call it? All right, I'll just, I'll be nice. They're talking junk. <laughs> Talking smack, okay? I think that's the phrase they used to say. <laughs> there are those that are stepping up and they're talking smack um, in a very negative way towards uh, Black people uh, because of the joy that they're getting from this video, video uh, going viral. Uh, so this video going viral is making a whole lot of people Big mad, okay? Big mad. A whole lot of people mad. So that's why I said this is a precursor, okay? This is a precursor. Yeah, they talking. <laughs> Beauty in the light, I love it. Hello, we say talking that yang. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen the, the, you know, along with those that are excited about uh, the, the, just the idea of someone with a platform like uh, Vladimir Putin to speak something like what what we have been saying for years, okay, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Again, whether it's real or not, it's still a big deal, okay? If it's AI, I'm not going to take away from the joy of the the folks that um, that are are uh, excited and celebrating. I'm not going to take away from that, okay? Because I think it, again. It's going viral. And because it's going viral, those who didn't know or who who hadn't heard of, of the possibility of Christ being black will hear it now. So I don't think our, our Heavenly Father does anything that, that's an accident. This is not an accident, okay? That that so many people are 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 uh, grasping it and passing it along and they're talking about it, okay? I just wanted to see what you guys are saying. Okay. Oopsie. Let's see. Charlotte says, only God knows if they were real. Maybe, maybe not. They did a whole lot of harm and evil and allowed it to go on. God knows the heart. And if they were only doing works, that's not enough. Okay. And, and again, uh, thank you, Pam. Or thank you. Who was that? Uh, my sister, Charlotte. Thank you for that. OCO, that... AI are fallen angels. Uh, so who would better know what the Messiah and his mother would look like other than those that were kicked out? Hallelujah. You're right. Oh, I say, okay, not OCO. I didn't know if you were, you know, that was a new word for me. I say is what you say. I say that, that AI are fallen angels. I got you, sis. See, we are told in the scriptures that what the devil means for evil, the father will turn it around for our good. <laughs> He's so good. He isn't he good? He's so good to us. He really and truly he is. Um I see the and I'm gonna I'm kind of jumping around family, so so bear with me. I'm gonna go back to the bridge. Um Let me see, can I do a, can I ask questions in here? I think I can. Give me a second, family. There's banners, there's comments, there's brand. I think that there's a way, I just don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. There, I think there's a way that I could actually put a survey or something like that in there. But since I don't really know what I'm doing, I'm going to leave it alone. But here's a question for you. They're investigating, and uh, currently they're saying that they believe that what happened uh, to the bridge, okay, is an accident or was an accident. What do you guys think? Do you think that's what it was? I have one sister. 
that wrote me and I had to tell her because I was waiting. I was waiting for uh, Elder Ayel to uh, finish his live uh, because I was watching and listening to him. Uh, but I had uh, said I was going to come on myself. Right. Let me see. And um, our sister, Miss, uh, Miss 234J5 said, what is going on? What happened in Maryland was a scene from the movie. So this is where I kind of got our title for this video today. Was like a scene from the movie, Leave the World Behind. Am I tripping or is this a coincidence? What do you, what do you think, family? What do you think about this? What are you guys saying? Doing a poll. Yeah, I was going to, you know, I know I can do it on the on the community channel. I just thought that there was a way for me to do it here too, uh, old McMoney. Uh, but I'm not going to mess with it. I, I'm not going to take the time because it would take time for me to, to figure it out, to see how, see what, how to get it to work. Yes, the ship hit the bridge. That I did hear that. Uh, you said it hit the main pillar dead on. Okay. Shalom, shalom, Amy. Glad you made it back safely, sweetie. I think so too, Amy. Amy says judgment is what I think. Okay. Is that right? Uh, authentic Israelite, shalom, shalom, sweetie, says the master's voice had a video last week that said boats, airplanes, etc., will crash because their navigation system will not work properly. There will be crashes and boats sinking and disappearing. And you know what? Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Elder Aiel. Uh, he is uh, the minister of One Nation, One Power. He has been saying things about uh, the different... Um, uh, defects that many of the airplanes and things like that will will experience as well. Okay, so it's it's uh, it's out there. People are saying it. Okay, people are saying it. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, so you know what? At this point, they're going to really have a hard time. This is what I think. Thank you, Denise. You say, I do, do not think it was an accident at all. Okay, so they're investigating it. Do you think that if it was planned or um, sabotaged, do you think they'll tell us? Seriously, do you think they'll tell us? So at this point, they're going to have to work real hard to pull the wool over your heads at this point. We have seen enough and been lied to enough that we're not readily, you know, we're not ready to just roll over and just give in. We're, we're, we're questioning things and we should be. I'm, I'm so glad that, that you guys are part of this family. Uh, I'm so glad that you guys think a lot like me, okay? Because that, you know, it, it's scary otherwise. If you stop and you think about all the folks that are out there that are just gullible and naive and they're just willing to, to go with the flow. I'm so glad to know that there are, are quite a few of us who put on our thinking caps and we just don't go with the flow. Okay. And I believe that's what's going to keep us alive. That plus, you know, the trust in the Heavenly Father. The trust in the Heavenly Father when he says go right to go right and not just go where they tell us to go because, oh, well, they have our best interests at heart. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I heard. There was a mayday, mayday, and that they um, they did lose power. That's what I heard, too, uh, Ruby Timbers. But don't you find it interesting that that bridge has that name? Don't you find it interesting that uh, that bridge has that name? Part of our history, an ugly part of the history, okay? An ugly part. And, you know, I, I just can't help but look at things like you reap what you sow. You know, this stuff is, is coming back to, to you know, the, the chickens are coming, coming home to roost, if you will, right? The chickens are coming home to roost. 
Yes. Thank you for thank you for the title. But uh, when you when you posted that, thank you, sis. When you posted that, I was like, yeah, you know, I, I really want to go out and I want to talk to the people because I'm looking at this and saying, OK, they're saying it was an accident and they're probably going to come back. And, and after they've done their investigation, say exactly the same thing. It was an accident. But was it? And if it wasn't, would they tell us? If it wasn't, how many folks out there would panic? Oh, we're, be, we're under attack. Well, you know what? Yeah, we are under attack. And folks need to know this. All right? Right, Rachel says, uh, yes, many of us are critical thinkers. Yes. Just like in the movies, yep, uh, Tamika Robb said loss of power supposedly made the ship go on, um, just like in the movies, yes. <laughs> okay. Do you guys, I, see, I don't trust, I just don't trust family. I, you know, there's so much going on in my head that says, mm, you know, there is such a thing as a heart attack gun. Are you guys aware of that? I've mentioned it here before. There is such a thing as a heart attack gun where uh, one group can cause another group to lose someone by bringing on what appears to be a heart attack and they don't have to even be close by the person that they're they're putting this on or attacking they don't all right they just aim it it's technology if they have that kind of technology that can can cause someone to be unalive with a heart attack I don't believe they've got the technology to make a ship or an airplane or a bus or a train malfunction. I do. The fallen angels have given wicked men and women technology to do all kinds of devilish things. All kinds. I couldn't. I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. So again, I, you know, I, I feel for anyone that 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 goes through, and I feel for anyone that that you know is suffering grief. I do. I feel for anyone that that has to has to to go through that. And again, I said it when I first started. I can't imagine what those people must have gone through. You know how they must have uh, felt. Uh, realizing that the bridge wouldn't hold hold them it was breaking down you know so i pray for i pray for the the families of those that are still missing and i pray for those that they found and and you know didn't survive okay super odd you know i can watch only so much of them I just have to tell you, thank you, Super Audie. Uh, you say Shalom, Mary, see and family when you're done, watch redacted, and they're fine on it. Was very is very interesting. I didn't watch them, and again, I have to take them in. Uh, I have to, I have to only take spoonfuls of them because I find them so. I was trying to trying to. I have a problem with racist people. I do. And I, I find them racist. So I, I have a hard time with them. I am I am a sub to them. I'm subscribed to them, but I can only take them in, you know, a spoonful here and a spoonful there of, of what they have to say because they are so tilted towards and they don't realize that they are. They don't. And I, I, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I'd say he's he's more so than she is. They say things. That, that are definitely that way. Yeah, uh, me too. Me too, Pamela. And I just can't stomach a whole lot of it. I just can't. Uh, Pamela says, I actually have a problem with ignorance 
racism too, but more ignorant than anything. Yes. All right. The fallen one has given the, uh, you know, given greedy men, wicked and, and evil men uh, technology, and they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff with it. Um, I think that the, the, the image that we have of Haiti today has a lot to do with the technology. I believe that a lot of the earthquakes that they experienced, the, the, the deadly ones that they experienced were set up. They were, they were, um, they used technology to do that. I believe that. And then they went in and, uh, you know, um, mess with the, the infrastructure with their politics of puppet masters, or they were, they've been acting as puppet masters, let's put it that way, um, in the political arena in that area. And that's why it's in such chaos today. And so I wouldn't be surprised if some of those that are going to be activated uh, soldiers in this country that will come against us, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they're not, some of those uh, soldiers are not Haitian, okay? Uh, Venezuelan, um, you're going to have Russian, you're gonna have, uh, I believe, Polish folks, you're gonna have, you're gonna have Middle Eastern folks that are here uh, that, are going to come against us. And a lot of it is based on our past, our history, our behavior in their lands. Okay. Okay, I will, Super Audi. I will. I will. I appreciate you sharing that. I will watch it. I will watch it. We have wronged so many other countries, it, you know, not even to it, not even mention to mention the, the people of their own country. <laughs> if, if they've treated us this bad, now, you know, they went overseas and did the same thing. <laughs> yes, it will, Tamika. I, I agree with you. You said that technology will play a huge role in the fall of Babylon. You know, I was uh, going through, and I, I do have some encouraging words. Let me get out of this right here. I got my tablet here on the side of me, and I do have some words. And I, I said, I'm already at the half, half hour mark. I'm sorry, I dropped my tissue here. But anyhow, anyhow. Going back to, I told you I was kind of going back and forth, but going back to um, how I relay everything to the Bible. I um, I think about the different areas that get hit. Um, and I think about, is this the hand of our Heavenly Father? Do you guys do that? When when you see devastation that, that occurs, do you look at it and do you say, hmm, is this, is this, um, is this uh, judgment from our Heavenly Father? Is this, this you know, is, his, is he spanking, you know, this person? Because again, you reap what you sow. What you put out there is going to come back at you. You don't think, you don't think it's going to happen, uh, but it will. Uh, we don't happen to, you know, what is it? Um, oh, I'm trying to think of somebody who got, um, who got spanked right away. Ananias and Sapphira come to my mind. Uh, they got hit hit with the you know the backhand right away. It took their lives uh, right away. But we don't see it like that now. They lied, you know. They lied, and um, it's, they they you know lied about it was money, greed, uh, land that they said they sold, um, and they lied uh, to the heavenly Father. Okay thought that they could hide something from him. And that's the world that we live in. All these wicked people walking around on this earth believe that they can do their dirt and that they can hide it from the Heavenly Father. Now, it's either one thing uh, that they don't believe in the Heavenly Father, have no fear of him, or they think that they can get away with it for, for a, a time, okay? Either they don't believe in him and if they don't believe them, they figure they can do whatever they want to do. 
But if they do believe in them, then they, they're they figuring that, uh, you know, the, the chickens won't come home to roost for, for right for a while yet. I still have things, uh, time to get it right. I guess that's one way of thinking of it, right? But if you believe that there is a, 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 a God in heaven, Father Yah, who is a just God, one day, you're going to have to meet the maker. <laughs> and you're going to have to pay for the things that you do. You're going to have to pay for those things. We live in a world, we live in this country, who tries to tell us that things are not racist. But then we have a bridge with a, a slave owner's name. We have currency with slave owners', owners faces on it. How is that not racist? Please, somebody, can you explain that to me? Can you explain that to me? So I'm sorry for the lives that, that have to suffer for this, but should that bridge have been named after this slave owner? You may have forgotten our past and you want to forget our history and you don't want it to be taught in the schools. But when it comes down to the children of Israel, the Heavenly Father calls the children of Israel the apple of his eye. Do you think he's forgotten what has happened to the children of Israel? Do you think he's erased it from his mind? He has not. Even if some of you have, he has not. And, and he is, um, he's very, very clear in telling us that there is going to come a time when they are going to have to pay, okay? They're going to have to pay for everything that they've done. Now, let's go back to Putin for a little bit. Whether he did or did not put that out, that, that the video that's going, the videos that's going viral, video that's going viral, whether he did or he did not, we know that that man reads the Bible. Am I saying that he is a righteous man? No, I'm not. Please do not put words in my mouth. Okay? I'm not saying that. But I do know that our Heavenly Father will use who he wills. It's not up to us. Okay? He will. And I do believe that, that uh, Vladimir Putin reads the Bible. He said a few things that, that kind of indicates that he does. All right? And that being said, what would you bet, or what would you get that he is aware of the scripture that says, and again, I'm going to say, and I believe this, he knows who the children of Israel are. He knows. So many of the world leaders know who the children of Israel are. It's not a secret to them, okay? Many of us are just waking up, but it has not been a secret to them. They've had the books that we couldn't read for so long, for, you know, for such a long time. They've had the history. They didn't lose history. We lost it, as the Bible said we would, okay? So they know. They know who we are. And that being said, if he knows who we are and he has read the Holy Scriptures, don't you think he's read that scripture that actually says that if you bless Israel, you will be blessed? Come on, family. Come on. The man is not an idiot. Somebody said it yesterday. He's a critical thinker. I think it was yesterday or was it today? I, I don't remember where, when somebody said that. He is, he's, he's, he's a person that sits down and analyzes things before he just goes and moves. He's not, the, he's not a hothead. He's not a hothead. You know, I believe that, uh, that Netanyahu guy, he's a hothead. He gets all, all in his, his feelings and, and acts 
uh, it, you know, on the spot, acts out. I, that's how I, I see him. Okay. I, he shouldn't even be a, I'm not going there. I'm not going to go there. But anyhow, I don't get that from Vladimir Putin. Okay. I don't. He is a calculated type of, of thinker. And if you go to war, <laughs> if you're going to go to battle, wouldn't you want the God of those people on your side? If you read through the Bible, we messed up, family. We did. We messed up. Israel, you messed up. Our ancestors, we messed up. We had a reputation that went before us, ahead of us, because of our Heavenly Father. We had a reputation with, with the, the other nations. They didn't mess with us because why? They would say, well, you know, we're not gonna, we're not going after them because they have a they have a heavenly father that fights battles for them. We had that. And we we threw it away. We had that and we threw it away. We messed up. But all of my brothers and sisters who are who are on this journey with me right now, the ones that are wanting to do it the right way, we ain't gonna mess up again. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it right this time. Okay, we're gonna do it right this time. We did. Absolutely. And and so many are so angry and, and filled with they're filled with anger. Some of them are filled with hatred. Uh brother uh Jermaine says we brought judgment on ourselves to turn our back on our father. When my brothers and sisters can acknowledge that, then the healing process can happen for them to, to move forward out of anger and out of hatred for those who put heaped on, heaped and on the burdens uh, uh, of oppression and everything else on us, okay? They, they, they look at the people and they're very, very angry and they're, you know, they're, they're uh, hating on them and, and uh, not fully understanding the judgment, not fully understanding that the, the Heavenly Father um, was behind it all. Okay. So they're hurt. Our brothers and sisters are hurt. Okay. They're hurt. They're angry. And, uh, you know, I keep praying that, uh, they see the light before it's too late. I, I keep praying for these brothers and sisters. I keep praying for them um, because right now they look at me as I'm as though I'm the one that's crazy. They look at me as as though I have uh, somehow or another. Um, what is the syndrome uh, when you when you fall? I guess you could say in love with with the person that's kidnapped you and and I forget what that you know what I'm talking about. But they look at me as as that not understanding that I went through the same phases that they went through. I went through the anger. I went through the the hurt and the 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 hatred, the bitterness, and all of that. I went through all of it. The Heavenly Father got me out of that. He 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 drug me out because I was I was hurting. I was hurting uh, when I was going through the journey of waking up. I was hurting. I truly was. And he drug me out of that. And I'm so grateful for it. I'm, I'm grateful that he did that. And I'm praying that he'll do the same for our brothers and sisters, that they'll see the light because he's He's given us a, a, a commission. What is that commission? To go into the world and, and to, to preach the gospel, really? You know, to tell them about uh, coming back home, to tell folks, not, not just one group of people, but all people, all people to come back home, that the Heavenly Father wants them to come back home. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And you can't be a light if you're filled with all kinds of, of darkness. What is darkness? Hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness. That's the darkness. He, did, he called us into his marvelous light, right? He called us into his marvelous light. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. So, you know, we got, we got this, this thing with the, the bridge going on. 
we got this thing with 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 uh, uh, Putin and the the video going viral, and shortly after that that video went viral is when they had that attack over there, right? So what's with that attack? You know what I'm talking about. What's with that attack over there, family? They got to stir this man up to do something before he starts opening his mouth up and saying something. <laughs> right? What video? <laughs> Bless your little heart. <laughs> I used to think that this channel was leaning towards being racist. After listening today, I am convinced that y'all are racist. How are we racist? Please, please do tell. How are we racist? You see Amy here? Who am I racist against? See, Amy, this is my sister. Amy is my sister. Amy doesn't look like me. Okay? The Heavenly Father gave her the skin that she's in, and he gave me the skin that I'm in. We're different, but you know what? We're family. So you tell me, uh, tell me where you see racism at. Please, because I talked about the uh, national anthem. Is that what brought this on? You got butt hurt because of that? Or because I said that the founding fathers of this country are not my founding fathers because they were slave owners? You got upset about that? Please do tell us. Because if you can't, please do us a favor and be quiet. Or leave the channel and go someplace else. All right? It just doesn't make any sense. You know, you get the devil come on and I'm calling. Yes, I am calling you the devil because I've not said anything racist so far. Not one thing. I have the right to speak about my history, to speak about my past. And I have the right to bring my heavenly father into the whole mix of it all, because I have discovered, thanks to the Heavenly Father, my heritage. If that offends you, personal problem, that's on you, not me. Is that what made you go off in, on your little tangent? Because I, I, I'm claiming my heritage, that I'm an Israelite? Oh, I'm proud of that. Very much so. I'm very proud of that. It brings me great joy to be able to say that I am the apple of my Heavenly Father's eye. Hallelujah. Does that hurt your feelings? Good. Let me also say this. There are those that the Heavenly Father chooses, okay? Those that he chooses will have an eye to see and an ear to hear. Those who don't get it, let me say this, and I hope that it's clear for you. You're not chosen. You're not chosen. You're not going to get this. You're not going to understand it. You're not. So, yes, you will be offended, okay? Because you, you don't have eyes to see and ears to hear. And I can't change that. The only one that can change it is Heavenly Father. But you know what? He looks at the heart. And if he's looked at your heart and he's seen something in there that just doesn't, doesn't uh, meet his standards, you can forget it. You can just forget it. All right? That's between you and him. And if you don't understand what's going on, you're not getting it, that just tells me you haven't been chosen. It is what it is. So. 
Oh, the, okay. Uh, Amy, you're asking about the Putin because you were gone. You were away. Uh, you're asking about the video that, that's going viral. You say, okay, great. I want to see what Putin said. Would be interesting to see. It is interesting to see it. And again, Amy, we got some cousins. I'm telling you, we got some cousins that have taken just the opposite uh, approach to this, this news being put out there. And when I say that they've taken the opposite approach, you can just imagine, right? Um, they're hating it. There are uh, white folks that are hating the, the hating that this video is out there. They're hating that it's going viral. Uh, they hate the whole um, viewpoint that Christ could be black. And they think that uh, there's a few of them that have actually said that they believe he is trying to stir up a civil war. Why should this cause a civil war? And, and I'm just going to throw it out there for you all, for you family members. The viewpoint that Christ uh, is a black man. Can you guys say what, what, what you think? Why would that cause a civil war? Uh, here in America, that news going viral. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 I wish that too, uh, Amy. I do. You say it's sad. Uh, people are offended by knowing this country was built on the backs of slaves and a genocide of Native Americans. I wish more people like me would acknowledge the truth. And there are, there are brothers and sisters, trust me when I say this, because they come into the comment section and they will let us know. I know who you are. I know that you are the Israelites. I am uh, a descendant of Japheth. And I'm happy to, to uh, come into the fold, to be a part of the family. So there are many uh, brothers and sisters who, who acknowledge they're on this channel. They are part of this family. And they let me know that they are here and that they are part of this family. So I will, I will go to bat for my brothers and my sisters. I will go to bat for you because I know your family, okay? I know your family. So... Uh, for those that would come and say that you're not included in 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 the salvation and all that, it, that's crazy. That's not what the scripture says. That's not what the scripture says. So I'm about the facts. I'm about the truth. And the truth is the Heavenly Father says the salvation is open to any who, who, who believe, right? Who will come in with the understanding, the correct and proper understanding, not what the world has fed us. And that's why it's so important for folks, you know, don't come on here calling calling me a racist or us a racist uh, if you don't do this. If you don't read this, don't do that. Because what I'm telling you about is, is from here. If you're calling me a racist, imagine what you're going to call the, the, the Heavenly Father and His Son. Because then you'll be telling me, well, He's no respecter of persons. And that's absolutely true. It's, it's written in the scriptures, but let's put it in the proper context, okay? Because when you say that, you want to negate that he has a covenant people. <laughs> you think that those words, those, those part, that part of the verse will negate and erase his covenant people, and it won't happen. He has a covenant people. That's not something I set up as if I could. Okay. It's, it's something. And, and if you hate to hear me say that, and you think that that is racist, then you know what? You believe that the heavenly father is racist because that is what is in his, his word. Okay. So if you think I am, then you you definitely would think he is. He's got some. He's got some things to say about 
the devilishment that went on in this country as well as some other countries. He's got some things that he has to say about that. He has some things that he's got, he wants to take care of. He's He's got some unfinished business, okay? Our Heavenly Father has unfinished business with this country as well as some of the other countries on behalf of people who look like me. And that's, it is what it is. Like it or not, I don't really care. Okay? It is what it is. So, um, here's here's a place I'm going to take you to. And just, I'm going to read off these scriptures. Think about what I'm reading. Just think about when I start reading. Think about it. And tell me if you don't see the things that are going on today in what I read. Tell me you can't recognize these locations that are mentioned and some of the things that's going on today. I, I have my father, he, he knows the beginning from the end. He has a covenant people. He has not forgotten the covenant people. In the end days, hallelujah. He is determined in his heart <laughs> that judgment will come on behalf of the people that he has a covenant agreement with, on behalf of them. Even though the covenant people turn their backs on him, for a time period, he was upset. And he, he, he let us go out. We, he scattered us to the four corners of the, the world. We are still in the lands of our captivity today. He scattered us. Now he will, he will send his angels out. They will, he will gather us again. That's a promise. But you know what else is a promise? There's a promise that he's going to take and, and take care of all of those who came out against us. Because you see, when the punishment was going out over the covenant people, those folks that were measuring out that punishment went over what they should have. They went above and beyond what they should have. And you know what he says? He tells us at this point, it's not our battle. He's got our back. This is in the scripture. So if you read it, you know it. Okay, this is all in the scriptures. So go with me to Zechariah. Zechariah 9. We're going to start at Zechariah 9. Okay. Verse 1. Go with me there. They're going to have a big, big problems. Rachel, Rachel, they're going to have some big problems, sweetie. OK, most of the world leaders know who we are. OK, they're doing everything within their power to make sure that that word does not go out. And I think that's why they're one of the reasons why they're targeting um, uh, Russia. OK, that's one of the reasons why they're targeting. And of course, there are other things that are included in that as well. But um, um, they were all confederate against us. That's what the Bible says. OK, the Bible says that they were all Confederate. So I would include the Russia, Russia's in there as well, because at this late stage, you know, the truth is coming out. Right. Why? You know, we do have to question. We do have to question. Um, I believe that Heavenly Father, he's on purpose doing things and he's on purpose using people. So go to go with me again to uh, Zechariah nine, verse one. This is a message from the Lord, okay? And I want you, those of you who have the hardened hearts, I want you to hear these words because they're not mine, all right? This is a message from Ahia. His eyes are on everyone, everyone, especially the tribes of Israel. especially 
the tribes of Israel. So is he kind of singling out a specific group? Well, I would have to say, yeah. His eyes are on everyone, but you know, he's, he's focusing. He's focusing on who? His own, Israel. His eyes are on everyone, especially the tribes of Israel. So he pronounces, he pronounces judgment against the cities, okay? What once was will be again. There's nothing new under the sun. Human beings have a habit of not learning from their mistakes. So they repeat stuff. And Babylon is good for that. So he pronounces judgment against the cities. And I believe we're seeing that. Okay, here it says of Hadrach in Damascus, judgment will also fall on the nearby city of Hammond, as well as on Tyre, Sidon, whose people are clever. Tyre has built a fortress and piled up silver and gold as though they were dust or mud from the streets. Now, Ahia will punish Tyre with what? Poverty. If you, you see it happening? You see it happening? <laughs> he will sink its ships and send it up in flames. Now, now get this part. You can't make this stuff up. Both Ascalon, what does that sound like to you? And Gaza will tremble with fear. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not making this up. This is, this is the word, okay? Ekron will lose all hope. Gaza's king will be killed. And Ashkelon, empty of its people. Keep your eyes wide open and you will see the hand of Ahia moving. Keep your eyes open. A mob of half-breeds will settle in Ashad, Ashdod, and Ahia himself will rob Philistia of pride. Can you guys see this being fulfilled right now? Because I can. No longer will the Philistines eat meat with blood in it or any unclean food. They will be, become part of the people of our God from the tribe of Judah. You hear that? Okay. They're going to do a, a switch over, a change. Once out there doing the things that the heathens do, going to be a change. They're going to see the light. They're going to see the light and they will become part of the people of our God from the tribe of Judah. And God will accept the people of Ekron. And he did as he did the Jebusites. That's what I see when I read this. Okay. God says, I will stand guard to protect my temple from those who come to attack. I know what's happening and no one, no one will mistreat my people ever again. I'm going to stop right there for a second because are the children of Israel you pick which ones you think they are. Are the children of Israel at a point right now where they are not being mistreated? Have, have we gotten there yet? Have we gotten there yet? I would say no. 
So if we haven't gotten there yet, have the children of Israel been gathered by the hand of our Heavenly Father? Back by his hand? Have they been gathered? Because this is something that he's promising he's going to do so that there will be no more mistreatment of his people ever again. Once he returns, he sends his son to rescue us. We won't be dealing with this craziness ever again. Has that happened? No. no. Verse 9, everyone in Jerusalem, celebrate and shout. Okay? Your king has won a victory and he is coming to you. Hallelujah. He is humble. And he rides on a donkey. He comes on the coat of a donkey. I, the, uh, it says, Lord, will take away war chariots and horses from Israel and Jerusalem. Bows that were made for battle will be broken. Why? Because there won't be a need for them anymore. I will bring peace to nations and your king will rule from sea to sea. Has that happened yet? No, it has not. This has never happened in the past either, where our King, the Messiah, Yeshua, has reigned from sea to sea as the King, ruled, and reign. His kingdom will reach from the Euphrates River across the earth. Hasn't happened yet. Verse 11, when I made my sacred agreement with you, my people. Hello? Who's he talking to? You guys want to erase us so badly. You want to get rid of us so bad. Oh my goodness, it's not going to happen. Get a grip because it won't. He has not forgotten us. He has promised he will not forget us. We are holding tight to that promise. We are trusting our Heavenly Father that he is going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. He is a just God. And he is our Father. He says in verse 11, when I made a sacred agreement with you, my people, we sealed it. Whether you guys know it or not, it's by blood. Okay? He sealed it. It's by blood. He says it right here in this verse. When I made a sacred agreement with you, my people, we sealed it with blood. Now, some of you are captives in waterless pits. But I will come to your rescue and offer you hope. Return to your fortress because today I will reward you with twice what you had. Everything that's been stolen from you, everything that's been taken from you. Don't worry. Because he will reward you with twice what you had. Verse 13, I will use Judah as my bow and Israel as my arrow. I will take the people of Zion as my sword and attack the Greeks. These are Gentiles. I'm not saying that so that you'll go out there with your hatred of, of Gentiles. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that because the word says they're Greeks. These are Gentiles. These are the ones that have been very, very wicked towards the children of Israel. That's what that means. Not every one of them. And I pray that you guys get that. You understand that. Verse 14, like a cloud, a higher God will appear over his people and his arrows will flash like lightning. He will 
found his trumpet and attack in a whirlwind. Keep on messing with his people. That's all I got to say. Keep on beating us down. You won't have to worry about our hand as much as you're going to have to worry about the Heavenly Father's hand. Because he's going to slap you from here to Saturday. You don't have to worry about us. I would be worried about him. Verse 15. A higher all powerful will protect his people. This is what I'm talking about. When I say to you that I believe that uh, Putin knows who we are, as well as a lot of these other folks, and they're doing the, the, the opposite. They're banking on the devil, helping to defeat the most high, because you know they're going to come out against him, try to fight our heavenly father. The devil has convinced them that somehow or another they can win. They're not going to. These folks obviously didn't read the end of the book. Okay, they didn't. For some reason, they think that they can they can defeat my father, the all powerful, almighty. <laughs> they think they can they can beat him. Okay. They are in living a strong, very strong delusion. A very strong delusion. Because he is all powerful. My father is all powerful. He will protect his people. You've done enough to us, is what he's saying. You've done enough, okay? And they will trample down the sharpshooters and their slingshots. They will drink and get rowdy. These are his people, okay? They will be full as a bowl at the time of sacrifice. The Ahia, uh, our father, will save them on that day because they are what? His people. And they will shine. Now, I, I ask you, all the folks in the world, we Negroes are downtrodden. We're on the bottom of, of every ladder in the world. We've been abused, misused, negated, hated. You name it. These things have happened to us. These are the type of people who need to be rescued. Now I ask you, of the other folks in the world, especially those other folks that you guys want to, to put in our place, do they need to be rescued? Do they? Who in the world needs to be rescued? Does the Christian church need to be rescued? What are they being rescued from? Rescue from what? <laughs> Tell me what they're being rescued from. Have they been in, has the Christian church been in bondage? Have they the Christian has the Christian church been enslaved or any of these other people? Have they been in bondage and enslaved? Like the children of Israel. Make it make sense. He knew the condition that the children of Israel would be in as to why he would have to send out a rescue team. <laughs> he knew. Okay. He knew. Because he says in verse 16, he will save them on that day because they are his people. And they will shine on his land like jewels in a crown. And this reminds me of what Hitler said. I have this book, Time, it's a Time Warner book, something like that. It's an older book uh, that I bought. And there's a uh, article in there. It's about Hitler. And uh, he says in there that, that um, America has stolen God's jewels. And at the time that I read that, I understood what he was saying and what have you. I was just questioning why he was calling us God's jewels, as in, uh, you know, emeralds and rubies, jewels, okay? And I kind of wondered and questioned why he would say that. Well, it's in the scripture. I didn't know it at the time. 
Okay, I didn't I didn't know it at the time because it says here they will shine on his land like jewels in a crown. Okay, so this is this is something for Israel to be joyful about, and 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 you haters, <laughs> you haters don't want to see us living this joy. You have seen us downtrodden, put down, beat down so long that that's the that's the the uh, posture that you want us to remain in, and we refuse to stay there because you know what the dry bones are 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 coming back alive. the The breath has been 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 put back in us. The heart is pumping and beating really good right now because life is flowing through us. We see the end. We see who we are. We know who we are. We know that we can trust the Heavenly Father to do exactly like I said, what he said he was going to do. What is that? To restore us. Not only to restore us. There is, because of you haters out there, there is a part of me, I am going to just be honest with you right now. There is a part of me that is, is, is really and truly looking forward to him meeting out that judgment. I'm not planning on doing it because I want to see justice served. Because of the arrogance of the haters that are out there, the arrogance of, of, of saying like that one man that came over to uh, uh, my one of my videos and and was saying something about um, how he felt that that uh, black people were were uh, inferior. The arrogance. Black people are inferior and in that we've never done anything to amount to anything, uh, have never contributed to society and have never ever built anything. The man was delusional. Of course he was, but it takes a lot of arrogance to, to, to come out and spew that kind of craziness. There are those that feel that they have to uh, do whatever they can to put us down and to keep us in a certain place. And I can tell you this, you haters, our Heavenly Father has a special place in hell for you. And for that, I'm grateful. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything. But trust that my Heavenly Father has got my back. He's coming to rescue a people that needs to have uh, a, a rescue happen. Think of any other group in this, uh, of people in this, this world who needs to be rescued. Okay? That's who he's sending his son for. Is he only sending his son for them? Mm -mm. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But even he, when he came in the flesh, and he, yes, he did come in the flesh, and it looked like this. Even he, when he came in the flesh, he told us what his mission was. He came but for the lost children of Israel. He had a mission and he accomplished it. Does that close the door for any other nation to be saved? No, it does not. And you can guarantee that you haters are going to come to put words in my mouth yet again, but ask me if I care. Verse 17, how lovely they will be. Young people will grow there like grain in a field or grapes in a vineyard. I, Ahia, am the one who sends storm clouds and showers of rain to make fields produce. So when the crops need rain, you should pray to me, our Father. 
which are in heaven. And then he goes on. I mean, to me, family, take the time. <laughs> I'm going to skip down a little bit, okay? I'm going to skip down to 10 and verse 3, <laughs> where he repeats himself. He says in this, this section, verse 3, he says, I, Ahia, all-powerful, am fiercely angry with you leaders. And I will punish you. I care for my people, the nation of Judah. And I will change this flock of sheep into charging war horses. So right now, Judah and Israel are letting the Heavenly Father wage the battle. Right now. But there is going to come a time when he will use Judah and he will use... <laughs> Look out, he will use Israel just like he did back in, 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 in the day, in the, in the biblical days. They went to battle. When he said charge, they charged. When he said go out and fight and take care of all of these and don't, don't keep any of them uh, alive, they did what they were told to do for the most part. And when they didn't, judgment fell on them. So there will come a time where he is going to send out Judah. He's going to send out Israel to do exactly that and look out when he does, because they will have the might of the Heavenly Father behind them. And you think you can beat my father? Foolish, just foolish. And you think you can come against the children of Israel? Foolish, just foolish. Do you know who we are? Verse eight, no, verse five, they will join in the, no, let me go back to four. From this flock will come leaders who will be strong. I told you he's activating. He's activating the leaders. He's strengthening them. He's prepping and he's getting them ready. He's getting them ready. I'm happy about this. Because this means that we're getting closer to the end. I am sick and tired of the foolishness of this, this world. I'm sick of the racism. I'm sick of the, the arrogance. And I'm sick of the, the, the treatment that we receive here. I, I am. I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of a, a world that wants those who are, are downtrodden, beaten, to, to wallow in it, to enjoy it. But they themselves would not want to, to uh, experience it themselves. I'm sick of it. To, to want us to grin and bear it. I am sick of it. I don't know if anybody else feels the same way, but I'm sick of it. This place, you know, as you grow older, you hear people say, um, you know, you hear kids say, oh, you know, there, there's a skirmish going on at the playground and and one person, one of the kids takes the ball from the other one and, and, and they're not punished uh, correctly. So they say, that's not fair. You know, we, we've said that as, as kids growing up. And then as you, you know, start getting a little older, you hear people say things like, well, this world isn't fair. Like that's like it's supposed to be that way. Do you think that our Heavenly Father wanted it to be like that? No. 
No, not at all. We shouldn't have to 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 really live in a world that that folks are well uh, would say and and stand on it. This world isn't fair. So so get a grip. Deal with it. It just it it it, it irks me that you want me to be nice to you, but you don't have to be nice to me. It irks me that you even have that mentality. You know, and, and it just, it, it really does. It, it really gets, gets under my skin when I have so many people that will come um, to the channel. Not there's not a whole lot. Not, I don't want to say so many people, but it it gets under my skin because there's enough of them that do come to the channel and want to accuse me of being racist. Want because I speak on these subjects, um, and and you know they say some some things that are somewhat nasty, and I you know the the, the thing about it is I I can see their hearts. I can see where they're coming from and I can see that that it's nasty. Okay? Their spirit is it's a nasty spirit. But they think sometimes I believe they think that they're good people. But they don't want to be reminded of the history. They don't want to be reminded that Thomas Jefferson uh had slaves that he mistreated them that he had a young woman that was in his care that was underage that he slept with and, and made babies with. And he enslaved them as well. They don't want to talk about that. But, and, and they can see the atrocities that happened overseas uh, during the Holocaust. And I'm not saying that they weren't, but they become blind when it comes to acknowledging our history. Don't you find that interesting that you can be blind when it comes to acknowledge, acknowledging our history? Wouldn't that even make you even more uh, to believe that we are the children of Israel? Wouldn't it? Think about it. The very people that uh, Deuteronomy describes, you know, if 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 the children of Israel, if you you know how they say uh, the poster the poster boy for for this charge or this uh, type of activity or or um, what have you, if you open up the dictionary and you looked under the dictionary for children of Israel, you'd see my face or people who look like me because of the if you look at Deuteronomy. And um, and all of the 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 things that would happen to the children of Israel if they didn't obey uh, Father Yah, if they didn't obey Him, these curses would fall upon these children of Israel, and and a yoke of iron. We have images. They probably won't put those in the history books because they don't want to talk about that. We have images of of iron yokes put on only one people, only one people. But we don't wanna discuss that because somebody will get their panties in a bunch and uh, it, it makes them upset. And because I speak about those things, I'm a racist. And I noticed, I don't know what happened to that person that called me a racist that said this channel was racist. I don't know what happened to that person. I certainly would have loved to have heard uh, from a viewpoint what it is that we do here, that I do here, that would, would uh, make us so racist. You would look, you would think that they would be able to look. No, I'm not talking about those power, those in power, because they were Confederate. They know who we are. I'm talking about the average Joe and Jill. The average Joe and Jill, when you discuss these things with them, they have a hardened heart and they're racist, but they don't want to admit that they are. 
But uh, so long as you don't say that Christ is black, they're okay, they're good. Uh, so long as you can agree to disagree or come to some type of a, 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 a middle ground and say, and allow them to say that Christ is a Middle Eastern person, uh, if you don't allow them to do that, if you don't allow them to say, well, he wasn't black and he wasn't white, he was Middle Eastern, if you don't allow that, then they can't play with you. They're going to take their ball and go home, okay? They can't play with you any longer. It's, it's a done deal after that because they're not willing to take it to the next level. There's no way, there's just no way he could be black. If he can't be white, well, definitely he can't be black. He's got to be Middle Eastern. It's your heart that you need to check. At, at these last days, the Heavenly Father, he's got me talking for a reason. He's got me talking for a reason. It's not for me because I already know what color he is. He must be trying to reach some of you white folks that are out there that are hung up on this color thing. Your leaders know who we are and they're doing everything. They, that's why they make so many laws against us. Open your eyes. You see them. That's why the, the law has such a heavy hand with us. Open your eyes. You see it. We're not in, in the poor neighborhoods because we choose to be there. The economics have been set up to keep us there, okay? <laughs> uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to, to search these things out to understand what's really going on. If you don't understand what's really going on, it's because you choose not to. You choose to live in your ignorance. And unfortunately, that ignorance is gonna send you straight to hell. It will keep you out of the kingdom. Okay? And, and don't think that I just address these videos just to the white folks that are out there having a hard time uh, dealing with the color of, of our uh, Ahaya and, and his son. No, it's not just, just you because there are, there are uh, folks who call themselves Israelites who look like me that the Heavenly Father is going to have to deal with them too because they're rebels. They're not honoring him. They don't have the, the Holy Spirit in them. They just woke up, found out who they were, and don't have an inkling of the Holy Spirit within them because they're operating out of anger and bitterness and they, they're not willing to change. They're not willing to, to go in any other direction. They, they caught the tail end of uh, finding out that judgment was going to uh, hit those who oppressed us and they just ran with it, not realizing that their judgment is going to hit their butts too. So I get on them too. I'm not just getting on one side. And, and I, I do need to say this. I, I spoke about the, the, the white folks. <laughs> Excuse me. Who, who can't get beyond the, <clears throat> the skin tone. Excuse me. But... I've run across some Mexicans too. I'm here to tell you. I've run across some Mexicans who think they're white. Got the same attitude and sometimes it's even worse. So you fall into that category too. You haters. You fall in that category too. The, the thing about hate is hate doesn't have a, a, a color. Excuse me. Hate doesn't have a color. You, you hate because you got a wicked heart. Black folks, Mexican folks, Asian folks, and there's some of them too. You run across some of them that... that don't realize they're Asian until somebody white puts them in their place.
Hate doesn't have a color. You're just all wicked. But here's the thing. The Bible, not me, the Bible speaks of a time when the Heavenly Father will stretch out his hand <clears throat> to help out Israel. And some of these folks in high places are gonna, gonna want to get on the right side. Okay. They're gonna get on the right side for a time. <clears throat> for a time. So when I said beforehand that uh, when the civil war and stuff uh breaks out here, <clears throat> excuse me, in this country, when the civil war breaks out, now they're gonna try to uh, like I said, I listened to a few people. Uh, stitch the video. Uh, there's a young woman that that uh, speaks about Putin in this video, and she, you know she's she's kind of um, it, uh, she's the one that that's talking about what Putin is saying. There's a young lady that did a video, and she attached herself to the video that's gone viral with Putin, and uh, some other folks came and they stitched her video. Okay, what what she had to say. So they stitched her video and she was celebrating uh, that Putin would put this information out there. She's a black woman and she was celebrating that he would put this information out there. And she's suggesting to folks, go watch this video. You, you need to hear what he has to say, blah, 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 right? There were folks that came in to stitch what she, you know, this video. And one of the people that came to stitch her was a white person. And they talked about, they believe that, um, I believe that's what they said. It was a white person that said something about they believe that he is trying to stir up dissension and he is trying to get us to go into a civil war. What nonsense is that? That's what I have to say about that. What nonsense is that? This country doesn't need anybody's help. Putin is, Putin's or otherwise. We're already in trouble. Say that loud. Say that very loud. Omeg Mani says, we are not the ones threatening civil war. Who's threatening civil war, family? Who is threatening civil war? How many black folks have you seen with their rifles or their pistols and they're proudly uh, uh, saying in a video that bring it on? How, 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 many, how many black folks have you seen doing that? I've not seen that one, but I can tell you I've seen the, uh, the other side. We're not threatening the civil war. We haven't threatened anybody. So if we go, right, think about it. It, it, it. At this point, what, what does Putin have to do with it? At this point, it's the people here. <laughs> it's the people right here that are that are talking this craziness. Okay. I, again, I take and I, I associate everything uh, with biblical prophecy, okay? With biblical prophecy. At this point in time, we have nations who are confederate against us. So is it any wonder that we would celebrate if we heard someone come out that has a platform that reaches millions of people? Is it is it any wonder that we would want to celebrate that, the acknowledgement of something that we have been saying for years now, that we are Israel. Why would we not want to celebrate that? Now, whether it's real AI or not, at this point, to me, it doesn't matter. You know why I say it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter because it's gone viral. People are hearing about it. Some people are taking it in and are jumping on the, the train of celebration. But then you have those who are who are downright against it. 
and wanting to, to say he's just trying to cause division. Again, I ask this question. Why would that cause a division amongst the, the, the people of this country just by him saying or acknowledging that, that uh, Christ is a black man? When, if you read the Bible, you would find that out for yourself. So tell me again why that would cause a civil war by him making that statement. If, like I said, he did. If it's not AI, what have you? How would that cause us to, to divide? The only thing I could see out of that is the divide would not be because we're celebrating that, that he is black as the Bible says, and as we've been saying for years now, it would be because you can't handle the idea of Christ being a black person. And then you would want to come against those black people. That's the only thing I can think of because we're not coming against you by celebrating this. You know, I, I listened to some of the stitches and my goodness, they were awful. Some of the stitches were really awful. And, and what was it doing? It was showing who they were. Their hearts, they were showing you. Now, imagine those same people's, people with the hearts that they have. Imagine this is the day. Now, I'm not saying that it is because no man knows the day or the, the hour, right? But imagine that this is the day when the, the clouds part and we see the Messiah return. And they have this attitude. Imagine that. The devil has done a really, really good job of lying to people to have them believe in an antichrist because that's what it is. If you go against what's written in the scriptures, it's antichrist. That's the that's the antichrist spirit. And as my husband would say, it's not that you can't see it, you choose not to see it because it's written in the scriptures. If you read Revelations, you will see it. You know, if I were to talk to the same people and, and talk to them about what a rainbow looks like, none of them would have an issue with describing a rainbow. None of them would have an issue with telling me that when the Bible says that behind this throne is a rainbow, none of them would have an issue with that imagery. But the minute you say that he had feet as burnished brass, when, when you talk about his, his hair being wool, like wool, okay? They can't see that for what it is. They can see it. That's what my husband says. They see it. They choose not to. They are selective reading. They, they like John 3.16 until he becomes a black man. They, they like it until he becomes a black man. And once he becomes a black man, forget it. All, all bets are off now. Selective reading. And that's sad. That's, it's, it's sad. Like our sister um, Amy said, she wishes there were more people like her. When, because Amy, Amy reminds me of me. That's what I'm going to say about you, sis. Okay, Amy, you remind me of me. Um, early on when I gave my life over to Christ, I had an image that the world gave me. He was white. He was that, that seizure Borgia 
image. You know, a white man with the straight hair, light colored eyes. Of course, he was white skinned. That's the image that the world gave us. And that's the one we went with. And all those years that I was worshiping my heavenly father and he was supposed to be the image of our heavenly father, I was I was devoted to a white man and his son. And I had no problems with that. Like Amy has absolutely no problems knowing that his son is the image of the father and they are black. That's the way it's supposed to be. If you have a heart for the father and the son, it wouldn't matter to you. Truly, it wouldn't matter. You wouldn't be upset by hearing me talk about it. You would be celebrating with us. Because it makes sense. It, make, it makes so much sense. If he told us that everything was going to be upside down, good was going to be considered evil, evil was going to be considered good, right? If the devil is... Uh, the father of all lies, and he is the one that, that runs this place. He's got his minions all over the place, right? Uh, and he is the father of lies. It makes sense that if he told us that Christ was white, as, as is his father, it has to be the total opposite. It makes sense. It is hardest to love what you hate the most. Did you guys catch that? It is hardest to love what you hate the most. And who, guess who knew that? The devil. So he, he figured and that's why the, the nations were confederate against us. They were confederate. They wanted us to forget who we were because that was that was written. And we did. We forgot who we were, but they helped that that helped us in that that uh arena. They took children and separated children from parents so that the heritage would be lost. So if if you gave birth to a child and that child went totally across, you know. Uh, the country to another uh, place, they lost mama, they lost daddy, they lost their heritage. The Bible spoke of us losing our heritage. We would not know who we are. Now, uh, the other folks who, who have our identity will tell you they can trace their lineage back. They can't, but they say that they can trace their lineage back to, to uh, Abraham. Well, that says to me, you haven't lost anything if you're saying that you can do that. You know who you are if you're saying that you can do that, right? Unfortunately for them, you know, DNA has, has just ruined their, their story, their lives. DNA has ruined it for them, okay? And, and that's one of the reasons why it's illegal for them to, to take and uh, get a DNA test done, okay? It's ruined it for, for them, okay? But that's also part of the Heavenly Father's doing. He said these last days he was gonna, he's gonna bring the truth out. It wouldn't stay hidden, okay? It, why so many of us all at the same time almost are waking up, both the, uh, the tribes of Israel along with the strangers who are coming alongside of us. Now they've come in a little bit uh, after uh, not not uh, early on. So many of them are coming on now. They're coming on board. A uh, few of them have been with us for a few years, but for the most part, a lot of of the Gentiles are getting an understanding now. The truth is being made uh, uh, available to them now, and they're waking up just as the scripture said. 
but the, the father knows the beginning from the end. Why would the scripture tell us that Gentiles will one day wake up and say, we have inherited the lives of our fathers? It's because they have inherited the lives of their fathers. They were told one thing and they wake up and they find out, wait a minute, this isn't true. Those, those that you thought were, were the uh, losers, You know, those that you've been told all your life were the losers, come come to find out those are the ones, the very ones that the Heavenly Father was talking about in the Bible as his people. They are finding this out, acknowledging it. And you know what our role is? Our role on this end is to be available when they wake up to not throw hate their way, to not uh, dissuade them and tell them that they're not going to be saved, to not tell them that they're going to be licking the dust off your boots, uh, to, to not go in that direction. That's, that's what the father is going to take care of, not us. That's what the father is supposed to do. It's our, our duty, our job to reach out to them as brothers and sisters to bring them on board. Because it's the few bad apples that give us a bad name. It's a few bad apples that that make uh, the folks that would even think about uh, considering this uh, say, "Oh, they're just they're just bigots and racists over there." We're not, and and they don't believe that we follow the scriptures, and we do. Okay, it's just a few bad apples that are out there that make a bad name for the rest of us. So uh, we have to we have to be available, available to our brothers and sisters that don't look like us. So how racist is that for me to say something like that? Okay. So the the bridge, I just find it it interesting that it had that name in this day and age. I find it interesting. I find it as interesting as the um, um, the money. I find it as interesting as the money that we, we use today, the currency uh, that we use today. And I'm not surprised that our currency is losing value rapidly, okay? It's part of the whole Babylon system. Everything has been, um, it has been set up in such a way that it tells us and it tells the whole entire world that the children of Israel, known as uh, African-Americans, don't matter because the currency has slave owners on it and we are forced to use it every day to just conduct business, just to live in this country. Our currency has the faces of wicked men on them who have done wicked things to people who look like me. And we have been forced in this country that we're supposed to honor and reverence they want us to grin and bear whatever they throw at us because they don't think we matter. So is it any wonder at this point in time when somebody gets on a platform that's got millions and millions of people that, that listen to them and says that Christ is a black man, that we wouldn't celebrate that after so many years of being told we don't matter, being shown we don't matter, They understand it when they're talking about uh, uh, Adolf Hitler. They understand it perfectly well. 
But let me say George Washington. I say George Washington, they're going to say a founding father. Thomas Jefferson, a founding father. They're slave owners. They were slave owners. They owned people. And it wasn't a job. It wasn't a, 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 oh, it was a nice thing to have a good person that was over you. No, it was hell. My people went through hell. And if that were not so, it wouldn't have been a curse. Yeah. Okay. They went through hell. My people did. And you all out there, you haters, think it's okay for us to use the currency with these, these wicked people on them. And we should be okay with that. Well, all these years we've been okay. Yeah, we don't have a choice. And you have a bridge with the name of a person who wrote the anthem. And you wonder why people who look like me feel some kind of way about that anthem. You know, you choose to not acknowledge it, but you know, and this is your way of telling us we don't matter. But look at that bridge now. I think that our Heavenly Father's hand is involved in this. We haven't seen anything yet. We haven't seen anything yet. When them soldiers are activated here on this ground, it is my belief that they're not gonna come after me. Nope. And if you haters are smart, you better do what Putin is doing. Read the Bible and understand that if you bless Israel, that's us. Our Heavenly Father will bless you because if you don't, they're coming for you. They're coming for you. And when your nose is bleeding and you've been beat down, don't look for Israel to help you get back up, to have your back, okay? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And that's coming soon. The, the, the folks, the soldiers are already here. They're already here. I think that we're going to start seeing a little bit of, of uh, hacks here, a little bit of hacks there. It won't take much to, to uh, somebody mentioned that this bridge uh, is something that, that is, um, is it's going to impact them commuting back and forth to try to get to, I think uh, she's in one area and she's trying to get to New York and was saying that it will impact them. But they also are talking about how it will impact exports. Or was it imports? Both of them coming in and things going in and coming out. So it's going to impact us. Now, I don't know the ins and outs of that yet, but I bet it's going to have a broad uh, reach as to what it will affect with that being out of that bridge being out of commission. That wasn't just a, you know, just a, a, a little thing to have that bridge damaged. It sounds like that's going to have a far-reaching impact, okay? And we're going to start seeing more stuff like that impact this country as a whole. This place is, is done for. It's done. There's no saving it. And there's no turning back the clock. This place is done for. And those who have an allegiance to it, 
Hold tight. Just go on. Keep on holding tight. We'll see how long you last. My allegiance is to the Heavenly Father. To the Heavenly Father. I'm riding with him till the end. It's, it's a done deal. It truly is. So you get a chance to read the rest of what we were reading earlier. Um, what say you people? What what do you guys what do you guys say about this bridge thing? What do you guys say about Putin? I've been kind of uh, rambling on. Um, what do you think? What do you think? You, what do you think will happen after? What do you think his response will be? Because, you know, he believes that we're part of the responsibility of the attack. You know that, right? It was Terry Ann. It was shattered. It was amazing. It's like uh, our sister said, what is going on? Like a scene from a movie. It, it really was. It really was. And of course, I don't want to see anyone get hurt. Let me repeat myself on that one. You know, I, my prayers go to the families that are involved or that are, are, you know, impacted by this. My prayers go out to the family for sure. <laughs> Don't get me going on that one. Don't get me going on that one. Oh, oh, McBonnie says also the cognitive uh, dissonance of writing all men are created equal, but in the same document, say black folks are three fifths of a person, and natives aren't people at all, but savages. Yet, you get all of these folks that will tell you that this country was founded on God. Why would they put that off on God? <laughs> it was, this is, this country was founded on God. That's what they say, right? And they would tell you that, you know, things are okay. You know, things are equal. They know it's not. Yeah, you hadn't heard that, right? Um, he's looking at um, Ukraine, but those that have been assisting Ukraine, that would be who? Okay. That would be who? So there are those that are saying, you know, be on, on uh, alert family. Um, they're warning. They're, they're warning. They, before that attack happened over in Russia, a uh, word had gone out right beforehand uh, to stay away from large crowds. You guys heard that warning coming from a higher up, right? Stay away from large crowds. And uh, they were warned Americans that were over in that area to stay away from uh, places like uh, theaters and concerts and things like that. And the question is, why were they pre-warned uh, that something like that would happen? Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, old McMoney. Okay. So we've been, we, you, you heed the warning. You hear them, hear, hear them say stuff like that. Keep your head on the swivel, like I said beforehand. Don't hang out in crowds. I, I, that's what I said that earlier, uh, Phyllis. Um, you said Mary C and family don't take this lightly, but about what happened with the FSK bridge. They're not going to tell us everything. 
if it was an attack, I don't believe they tell us. I don't. If it was something that was um, a setup. And that goes back to, like I said, technology today. They've got the technology to do whatever they need to. Whatever they need to, they have the technology to do it. What? What? Really? Shalom, sweet sis, but the sword says the boat captain of the cargo ship was a Ukrainian here on a work visa. My local news reported. Did not hear that one. Interesting. Interesting. No, didn't hear about that either. Uh, Emmett, shalom, shalom, sweet sis. Uh, says, did you hear about the ex-worker of Walmart in Memphis went and shot the customers while they were shopping a few days ago? Hadn't heard about that one either. And that something happened in Ohio. They haven't mentioned the other one in Ohio. Hmm. What's the impact of, uh, to you, for you, uh, but the sword? You said you're about seven to 10 miles from the bridge. Will there, will there be an impact? Uh, how will this impact you and, and your family? See, that's what I was saying. Um, I don't know what happened in Ohio yet. I'm, I'll, I will wait and see what our sis has to say. Uh, Terry Ann says, what and why did the ship's lights go off before it hit the bridge? So here we go with the, the ability to, to uh, hack into stuff, right? They can do that stuff. Now here's something, uh, family, before I head out of here, the old McMoney says, why is there so much media coverage of the upcoming eclipse and not these shootings? That's a good question. That's a very good question. There's there's something else. Uh, usually when something, something is getting ready to kind of happen, we have this, we get these vibes, right? We get these vibes and uh, they kind of cling to you until something goes down. You kind of you kind of know something is up, right? So here's a question for you. Those of you that have little little ones, are they agitated? Those of you that have fur babies, have they been agitated lately? And then you yourself, have you been feeling or sensing that it, things are just like off, off kilter? Really off kilter. Hubby and I were, we were sitting in the, the room the other day, yesterday. And we were just, you know, we were having a normal conversation, you know, just kind of laughing and teasing each other and what have you. And and then all of a sudden he said, I think it was him that probably brought it up, but he was like, um, I don't know what it is, but, you know, I'm feeling I'm like something's up. Something major is up. I, I told him, I said, I feel it, too. And it wasn't it was not easy. It was it was increasing. And this was just last night. I said, it's not easing, it's increasing. Okay. So we were just talking about that. So I, I spoke with my eldest daughter today. And she was telling me that her son, who is, he's a teenager, you know, and she was saying that he is, my whole family, when I say my family, my children, they all have this. sense this this ability within them um to communicate you know we we communicate without opening our mouths sometimes right but they have this sense when something is just not sitting well and her teenager she said uh this morning came to her and told her that 
things were kind of off, okay? And so in our family, we pay attention to things like that. So she, you know, you keep an eye on, on them. You kind of keep an eye on what's going on. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's in the air family. It's thick. It's, it's thick. It's in the air. It's thick. So keep your head on a swivel. Okay. So Momo H says, Mary, see my husband and I have been feeling exactly the same way. We don't feel fearful. No, you're right. Uh, but just off. That's perfect how you explained it. Perfect. It, it could be. It could be Emmett. It could be beautiful. Could the bridge thing be a distraction from what happened in Russia? It could be. Oh, but the sword, look at you. I was up at 1.30 a.m., so disturbed, but didn't know why, and the bridge went down at 1.28. Look at that. Look at that. I don't believe that our Heavenly Father will allow things to happen without first giving us some type of a warning beforehand. And, and the, the sensation that something is just not sitting well with us keeps us on the alert. You know what it does? It, it keeps us on the alert, but we're more apt at this point in time to, to seek him, right? To seek him so that he can guide us, right? Me either, Terry Ann. Uh, sleep is is not a not going real well for me right now. So you know we can't ask our heavenly Father to give us sweet sleep because that's something that's written in the scriptures. Uh, but even with with me praying sweet sleep over my husband and myself, um, it still hasn't been very restful for me. So I I can relate, Terry Ann. Okay, I can relate. So anyhow, family, uh, that's really all I had. I just uh, wanted to come to you and, and you know, talk about what's going on out there, you know. Um, I still have a sense. I still have a sense that someone with a big name will be taken out. And it will be called a the nation, if you know what I mean. Okay, I don't know if I can say that word. Um, somebody's going to be taken out, big name. And it's going to cause a stir. Mm-hmm. But this is not for us to be fearful again. Um, there's there's worse coming, like our sister Phyllis says, the worst is yet to come. But it won't come nigh us. All right. Stay on that straight and narrow path. Uh do the Father's will, keep his commandments. Love your neighbors. Pray. Read the Bible. Fast. Okay. Do all those things. Stay under his will. And he won't let these things come nigh us. That's right. Psalm 91. Absolutely. All right. Yep. Right. Fasting more. I'm I'm trying to uh where that at? <laughs> it went by so fast. Where did it go? Uh right Rachel uh says, right, fasting more, more praying. Absolutely. Absolutely. More so now than ever. More so now than ever. And and this is a good thing too. It wouldn't hurt you to to make sure that you're all set with your bags. Okay. Thank you, old mate Ronnie, for that reminder. That's it. You know what I'm talking about, Pamela. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to post it, but you know what I'm talking about. That's that's what I'm talking about. Um, I can I 
sense that that's still going to happen to somebody up there. They, they're going to need to take somebody out. So anyhow, family, that's all I have for you today. I uh, I, I thank you for spending time with me and, and uh, talking over these matters. I um, Okay, there's a request in the um, in the chat family. I'm gonna have to go and see that Emmett. I haven't seen that yet. Uh, exception to the rule, we will definitely lift you, lift your grandson, your grand grandbaby. I'm sorry, up in prayer. Um, I'm not going to even try to uh, pronounce that. What he what? Yes, yeah, he he has been diagnosed with a rare mutation. Um, so yes, we will make sure that we lift your grandbaby in prayer. Your baby is our baby. We're family. So definitely so. Definitely so. We pray healing. Healing, complete healing and recovery. Okay. All right, family. Love you. Love you all. And uh, know this, our Heavenly Father, Pray for our sister here and her grandchild and anyone else in the family that is in need of prayer. Just cover the whole gamut. Health, um, careers, finances, uh, housing. Uh, just cover the whole gamut for the family here. Pray for them all and pray for our brothers and sisters who are, are um, Gentiles and having a struggle because we did family. Uh, Israel, we struggled. When we found out who we were, we struggled with the phases. And just like we struggle with the phases, our Gentile brothers and sisters, they're struggling too. So pray for them as well. Pray for them that, that the Heavenly Father will help them get to the next level. All right. And for our brothers and sisters who are, are still in that phase of hatred, bitterness and anger. Pray for them too. All right. And on that, like I said, I love you. But know this. Our Heavenly Father, he loves you so much more. Shalom, family.